Hello everyone, my name is Feck and Maiden, but since we're friends, you can call me Tanisha, and today is all about yoga for sensual open hips. Today, at the time I'm filming this, the moon is in Scorpio and my Scorpio Venus is activated. I'm also attracting so many of you that are telling me that your hips are tight, so we're gonna fix that today. Today is all about dedication to the hips, to the sacral chakra, to the Svarishtana chakra, and we're going to focus on allowing ourselves to feel sensual, to feel juicy in this area of our body, and also to hold space for any of the emotions that come up as we do hip-focused yoga. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, then let's get started. We're going to start in a seated position because a lot of people sleep on how juicy it is to connect to the hips when you're sitting down. This is also going to make it more accessible for you because you can do this in the car. You can do this at your desk. You can do this sitting down at your couch. You can do this also standing up. So we are going to start in a seated position with the legs crossed in, and we're going to, with great firm grip, hold our knees with our hands and really use that to push our body around and do some chest circles. So as we start warming up the spine and the hips and the hamstrings and all of the things attached to your pelvic bone, we can go ahead and introduce the idea that all of your emotions are stored here. So no matter what you're feeling, joy, grief, anger, sadness, or you're just feeling fine, all of that information is embedded into your body and the place that it is embedded is, of course, your sacral chakra or your hips, your pelvic bone. So even if you've had just a minorly stressful day, you can come to this area of the body and really nurture it to release those stagnant emotions. We all know releasing stagnant emotions is really important to manifesting the life of your desires. Even if you just wanna wake up in the morning and have a great day at work or have a great day at home, it's really important to tap into your emotions about that thing so that you can manifest your desired outcome. So even, again, if you wanna have a good day at work tomorrow, you probably need to process the emotions of what happened at work today. And you can do that by making a commitment to focusing on your hips in your yoga practice this year. You can also vary this position by doing full circles, which is what I'm doing now. You can go side to side. That one feels really good. Just make sure to reverse the side that you're going on so that both sides of the body get really warmed up and juicy. And keep this fluid, don't think about it. You can see what I'm doing for a guide, but definitely do this intuitively to get that extra touch of tapping into your body and tapping into what your hips have to say. So when the spine is nice and stretched, we're gonna take a deep breath in and we're going to hold our knees and use our knees and the grip that we have on our body to give us an extra stretch. So taking a deep breath in through the nose, using those knees, gripping on them, stretching out the spine. <clears throat> I like to do some cat cows with this position just because it opens up the spine so much. As I exhale, I round out my back in a concave position. And this really stretches out the upper back. As I inhale, I open up the chest, draw down the shoulder blades, open up the heart chakra, open up the anahata center. Before exhaling back into a concave. And inhaling, drawing the trust up. Shoulders back, deep breath in. And I like to do this one really slowly. Like to be tender on the body as I work on these specific chakras 
the Svarishtana chakra or the sacral chakra as we say in English is a chakra that you should be very tender and loving to. All of your memories from the time that you were born to this moment right now, your memories have gone through this chakra center. This is why it's associated with water. The pelvic bowl is obviously associated with the cup of life. And that is because the more that you dedicate your focus to this area of your body and this energy center, the sacral center, the more memories you're going to come across, the more emotions you're going to come across. And all of those topics deserve tender, slow, sensual care. We don't want to be activating our sacral center and then have a bunch of overwhelming emotions come up and then we don't know what to do with it and then we just kind of ignore it? Like, no. <laughs> Honey, it's 2023. If you are a grown-ass woman watching this, which 90% of you are women, 18 to 35, the people that be fucking with my art, if you're a grown-ass woman and you're not regulating your emotions, that's on you, babe. We're, we're giving you the tools to access your emotions and deal with that, just like in this yoga practice. So it's no one's responsibility, but your own. And that hands you back your autonomy. So that feels really good. Taking a deep breath in, we're working up that energy from the root, activating the sacral, but also bringing in strength and clarity and focus into the Manipura chakra or the solar plexus. So as you take those deep breaths in and you're feeling that energy come up through the root, up into your body, notice that it goes through your solar plexus, which is the energy center for your will. It feels really good to have a healthy, balanced sense of those lower three chakras, because one, that root chakra is here to keep you safe. The sacral chakra is here to keep you emotionally open and emotionally available. And when you get that information from those first two chakras, the root and the sacral, you can then act as an adult in your autonomy with your power about how you want to go about it and what you want to do with that emotion and with that information in your own body. So as you're breathing in, imagine that center being highlighted root sacral solar root sacral solar root sacral solar taking deep breath in through the nose being aware of all of your senses right now as we tap into the hips what are you sensing what is the light are you in low lighting are you outside do you feel the wind what do you hear in your background? What is the smell of the area that you're in? Take in all of these sensory information and bask in it and let yourself feel the emotion of what it feels like to take in these senses. So if you are sitting by a beautiful vase of flowers like I am right now and you can smell the perfume on the petals, take in that sense, that sensory information and allow yourself to find the emotion that it brings up. The easier and the more practice you do with using your senses in your yoga practice, when you're not in your yoga practice and you're having, let's just say, a stressful day, you can ground yourself through your senses and easily find the emotion that those senses are bringing up. So taking a deep breath in, doing a scan of our senses, and how that makes us feel before letting it out, not holding in onto any of these observations with any attachment, just simply let them go. Exhaling out of the mouth, feel free to let out any moans or groans if they come out. And as we come to this center, we've warmed up our hips, we've warmed up our spine, we're aware of our senses, we're aware of our present being right now. 
I invite you to take off the legs into a straddle. And you don't have to go into the deepest straddle today. This isn't a straddle specific yoga class. I already have that. Um, if you want more on how to get into your straddle or your middle splits, I can link it below. But for this class, we are just going to sensually love on the hips. So take your straddle in like really close, just enough that you are actually in a straddle position so that we can warm up the hamstrings along with the hips. <clears throat> so leaning over, very small movement, leaning over to the side, leaning your body weight to the front, and then leaning over to your other side. We can continue to do these chest circles that we started in the beginning, but now we are doing them with the legs out. And the same exact movement, <laughs> just with your legs folded out rather than folded in, in our crisscross applesauce position, is going to activate more of your back and more of your legs. And this soothing of your hamstrings and your glutes and your legs, but also your spine and your back, is going to soften and relax the muscles around your hips. So continuing this chest circle, going in opposite directions, remembering to love on each side of your body. Only go down as far as your body weight can hold. So if you're feeling tighter, bring up your posture into a more straight position. And the more you get warmed up, the lower that you can go with your chest in this circle. Also for extra feminine grounding, you can take the hands and either keep them on the knees or the tops of the legs or even bringing them down onto the yoga mat and literally using the floor as a support system for your balance. I love instructing my students to bring their hands to the floor because it's a really crowning experience and it feels really good to use the floor and the, you know, the hard hardness of the floor to support you when you're doing really sensual feminine movement. It's like the divine masculine essence of the floor, which is here to be hard and to be stable for you. You can actually use the floor to your advantage to get more into your feminine Shakti essence. So put your hands to the floor, especially if you're outside in nature, put your hands in the grass and actually allow yourself to feel the stability of the earth below you. So we can go side to side in this position with the chest, only going down as far as your body weight can hold. And I like to do a U with this position at the top of my head. So if I had a pole coming out of the top of my head, I would go down on one side, swing over and then come up on the other. And that makes a U in the air. So we're swinging down, very much curving, swinging up, coming back down, curving around, bringing the spine back up, that is really going to help you work every muscle from the back of your neck all the way down your back to your hip bones. So this is complete spine loving that we're doing. Also, in an upright position, you can do body waves, which is bringing your head down, rolling that chest down before looking up, rolling the head back, doing a complete wave in your body before bringing the head back down, chest down, chin down, rolling up, coming back. In this motion, I recommend doing slowly. Taking a deep breath, allowing any moans and groans.
concaving the chest as we come down, scooping up the head and opening up the chest as we come up. taking a deep breath here. So now that we're already in a straddle, let's do some of our most advanced work right now when we're a little bit warm. We're only gonna do a little bit and then we're gonna cool down because this yoga practice is just for nurturing. It doesn't need to be a whole big thing. I want you to be able to do these movements on the regular. So this is for when you're very warmed up You've done a lot of love with your cat cows and your side to side and your chest circles. I recommend you taking your straddle out to its biggest position, so as wide as you can do today. Remember to take your hands back and lift up those glutes, especially if you have any, any glute muscle, I guarantee you need to lift them up so that you're actually sitting just in your pelvic bone. And you can see that you're sitting in your pelvic bone by the shape of your hips. So I'm making sure that my glutes are lifted up so that when I sit, you can see my pelvic bone is like an even cup. If I filled a cup with water to the very brim and sat it down, the water would be even. And that water in that cup is basically our hip bones right now. So set your cup upright, make sure that your hips are not turned in like this so that if you had water, it would fall out of the front. And also make sure that your hips aren't too tucked in that if you had water, it would fall in the back, okay? So we're keeping our hips neutral as if we had a cup of water that was sitting evenly and all the water was at the top and nothing spilled out. So with those neutral hips, we're gonna take our deepest stretch into each of our legs. The reason I like to do this when I'm already very warmed up is because the hamstrings and the hips are like sisters. They're not twins, obviously, they're not the same part of your body, but they work together so much that they are basically siblings. So the happier your hamstrings are, I know the happier your hips are. So take one of your legs, you can come all the way down to your knee, you can hold your ankle, you can come to your foot, or you can go ahead to the floor if you are already more flexible in that area. And lean over your body weight. This is going to activate this muscle right here. <laughs> this little connector that connects your leg to your groin and to your yoni, this is what we're opening up right here. It's a very small, little is it a tendon i need to i need to look this up but there is a small connection from the base of your thigh to your yoni and this position is a way to get in there and to massage that so that your yoni is fully stretched but also your hips and your legs are too so this one is like a combo she hits multiple different areas so come over to the side Give yourself a deep stretch. Love on those toes. If you make it to the feet, you know, give the foot a little touch and massage as you come into this leg on one side. To release, slowly slide your hand back up your leg. Slowly bring your body back into an upright position before going to the other side. Slowly coming down. <clears throat> Coming all the way down to the foot, if that feels good. Giving the foot, giving the toes a little pop. <laughs> giving the ankle a little twist before leaning your body weight fully into that area of your groin. Again, this is why we only do this when we're really, really warm. Because if you're not warmed up and you put your body into this position and expect it to go as deep as it possibly can, your body is gonna be like, <laughs> no, no babe, you need an access code. <laughs> so of course, give yourself that access code before going deep into a yoni stretch like this one. Then for our last part before we cool down, we're gonna come back up into the middle 
And we're going to do the middle, just bringing the chest down as far as we can go. And honestly, this is good for me today. I could, I could probably come down on my elbows. And this is stretching both sides of my legs that are connected to my groin. So both my legs, both sides of my yoni and my back are activated in this semi middle split, semi pancake position. And I'm gonna hold it here. And my favorite part is to do very small, ooh, this is, I can really show you on the camera because you can see my hips. I like to do small little micro movements when I'm in this position. So right here where, my, where I'm pointing with my nails, this is when I do a little cat cow, the tiniest, tiniest cat cow. Letting my pelvic roll on the floor, using the floor as my stability. Again, I'm like pushing down with my elbows, but I'm also using my hip bone to use the floor. You can also do a little side to side stretch. And if you're not able to come down to the elbows today, you can stay on the hands and do this side to side. And also a tiny little cat cow here. And this is going to help you roll out your pelvis. And girl, let me tell you, <laughs> Ooh, this one is so juicy. Do this one with lots of privacy and do this one in your bedroom after you've taken a shower and the lights are off because if you get into this yoga position, this like little straddle, and you start rolling like how I'm doing right now, and you start getting really juicy and it's and your your hips aren't tight anymore, not even kidding you, this, this yoga posture can get you to an orgasmic state of being in your body. So tread lightly, <laughs> tread lightly. Tantric advice, uh, this one's gonna get you there, but you cannot jump into it. You have to really prepare yourself for it. So those are my tantric tips and tricks. We can go ahead and bring the legs back to center in a folded position. And we're gonna focus on some breath work before we head out today. Taking a deep breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Exhaling, letting out any moans and groans. Closing the eyes if that feels good or softening the gaze. Bringing our energy inward Focusing on our breath as we take a deep breath in. And exhale. Let everything go. Take another deep breath in. Exhaling. Releasing tension from the body. I invite you to come back to your slow and sensual chest circles in your seated position. <clears throat> it's always good to come back to this position after having gone through a hip focus yoga flow. Remembering to go to each side of your body and being really tender with yourself. I'm really proud of you if you've made it this far into the yoga practice. That means that you give a damn about how you feel. <laughs> and in a world of people who avoid their feelings until it's worst case scenario, I'm very proud of you for taking the time to tap into your sacral chakra, feel into your body and tell yourself that you love yourself in the form of giving your body exercise and meditation. That's very special. Good for you. <laughs> I'm rooting for you. <laughs> so as we are slowly giving the hips some more love and support before 
coming into stillness and sitting. I want to thank you for joining me. Subscribe to my channel for more yoga and belly dance uploads. And I hope the rest of your day is totally kick-ass. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Namaskar. Love you. Peace.